What's up, Oasis family? Welcome to Kingdom Culture Talks. Pastor Jody, Pastor Lindsay here. Yes, and our heart behind Kingdom Culture Talks is to help you establish a healthy kingdom culture in your life. We hope you enjoy today's episode. What's up? Welcome to today's episode of Kingdom Culture Talks. So excited to dive into our conversation today. Pastor Jody here, and I have a special guest with me. I'm so excited to have Pastor Kelly. She is on our executive team, and uh, we are going to be talking about part two of discerning the voice of God. The voice of God. It's going to be so good. Awesome. We were talking this morning about this topic and just how there's so much that can be said on it. If you haven't had a chance to watch last week's video with Pastor Lindsay, we talked about part one, discerning the voice of God. And so we we covered a lot in that video, I feel like, but it was really good. We talked about um, hearing the voice of God. The primary way you hear it is through the word of God. We talked about you hear it from your leadership Mm -hmm. and from wise counsel, people around you. And then we also talked about the inner witness and the inner peace of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Today, I invited Pastor Kelly to be a part because we are going to be talking about other kind of more narrow and more yeah. specific ways that God speaks a lot. And I know that she's had a lot of really cool encounters and experiences with the Lord and with the prophetic. And so I'm I'm really pumped yeah. to dive into these. You know what I love about this topic, even when I was watching it just for myself, watching the Kingdom Culture Talk, I was thinking about discerning the voice of God is one of those things where, you know, it's like, you don't want to say like, this is the most important thing, Yeah, but it's like, it kind of is. Yeah. Like if you can learn to hear the voice of God for yourself and discern the voice of God, really you are limitless because so true. it's, it's kind of like one of those vital things that if you can catch this, you can catch a lot of other things. It's such a foundational piece in our intimate walk with the Lord. Yeah. I kid you not. This was not planned. I was just in my time with the Lord this morning and I am reading Proverbs chapter 20. I re- I stumble across this verse and I'm like, this is so cool because I know we're going to be filming this today. And it's Proverbs chapter 20, verse 12, the Passion Translation. And it says, mm. lovers of God have been given eyes to see yes. and ears to hear from God. Oh. I highlighted that. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, we're talking about this today. The lovers of God, yeah. he gives us eyes to see and ears to hear yes. from him. And he's always like using things to get our attention. Yeah. He's always using things. Absolutely. So today we're going to dive not super deep, but just kind of like intro level into ways that God speaks. He gets our attention a lot through numbers. He gets our attention a lot through dreams. Uh, I know for Pastor Lindsay and me, a lot he speaks to us in dreams. And then... um Words of knowledge or prophetic words, you know, from people who don't know you, from men and women of God, from various, just so many different situations that those can come. But talk to me, Pastor Kelly, about some of this. What are your initial thoughts on some of these ways, numbers, dreams, prophetic words? Let's just kind of rip the Band-Aid off and dive into it. Well, I think just because numbers is the first one on my list, I think about how in the last video, Pastor Lindsay or you, I think it was Pastor Lindsay said like, you know, I think sometimes we get, we can get in our head or get nervous about like, I don't want to miss hearing God. I don't. And I think when you talk about numbers, that's one of those things that Pastor Lindsay said, like, you know, if you want to hear from God, like, don't worry, he's going to get your attention. And I think when God speaks to us through numbers, it's one of those things, because maybe at first glance, you don't even see, you just think like, Oh, awesome. Uh, you know, but yeah. then you start seeing it over and over and you're like, wait a second. Like, this is this not normal. <laughs> yeah, this is weird. Um, and I think it's one of those things that God will get your attention. Yeah. And you don't necessarily have to look like he said, yeah. like under every rock or it's just as you're going about your day. And it almost to me too is like, oh, thank you, Lord. Like, yeah. I'm just going about my day and it's a reminder of, hey, you're speaking that to mm-hmm. me. You're, I remember <clears throat> going through one of like, the transitional moments of my life where I was taking on a lot more responsibility in um, not necessarily like a intimacy and like spending time with the Lord, but just more responsibility in my position of like having to get stuff done. And I was seeing the number 42 a lot, Mm -hmm. which we know Pastor Lindsay talks about that number. So I think a lot of us see that number now, but 
it, it was just like catching me. Yeah. And one of the things that I, one of the scriptures I had never saw, that was a verse 42 is in Mark. And it's when he's talking to Mary and Martha yeah. and he tells Martha, you know, Mary has found the good thing and it won't be taken. That. And it was just yes. a sweet reminder to me. And so hey, good. as you're learning to steward things in new levels and you're learning to practically take on mm-hmm. work, don't forget that the most important thing is intimacy. Yeah. And that's just one of the little stories that I have with that. But I think when I think of numbers, I think it's one of those things that it's going to capture your yeah. attention. It's going to grab you. It's like, so when we're talking about this, it's like, you know, maybe you always look at the clock when it's eleven, eleven, Yeah. Or you always see the number seven everywhere. Or you always see like, it's it's oftentimes like when you see three 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 or four four mm-hmm. four or two 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 you know repetitive numbers and you're seeing those all the time like God's really screaming yeah hey, pay attention dive in to do some research on this yeah. so like I love what you're talking about there it's not like you're just going hunting and you're yeah. becoming some obsessed. weird paranoid <laughs> obsessed person and looking for the numbers but it's just I can only you know <laughs> the number of <laughs> ah, but it's just like you know, when it just yeah. leaps out in front of you. But I do want to give some words of caution with this because I've just on this journey, you know, the first thing that you do when you're seeing numbers is like Google it. <laughs> Google. And so when you do that, though, a lot of websites will come up yeah. that are like demonic, yeah. <laughs> new age, yeah. angel numbers. Yeah. Like these things are twisted, perverted. They're, they're counterfeits of the real yeah. thing. And so mm. God does not He's not about mixture and he's not right. about like using Absolutely. new age angelic number. Yeah. I don't even know what all of it is, but you really got to be using discernment mm-hmm. when you just click on these different websites. So you don't right. open yourself up to some weird positive energy because you saw this number thing. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to share a couple of practical resources and maybe our media team can link these in this podcast today because for numbers, um, there's a really good resource. It's a minister by the name of Troy Brewer. Mm. And he has a lot of books on like numbers and different prophetic significant things, but he has a lot of YouTube teachings like on so many of the numbers. Yeah, He's good. one that Pastor Lindsay and I just will look up real quick because you want to have trusted sources. And yes. there's others too, tons of others too that are great, but he was just one that came to mind today. So I wanted to throw in like... Some practical tips for y'all too. Uh, obviously, we can't go super deep into the teaching of what all the different numbers mean mm-hmm. today, but just kind of giving giving you a little appetite, get your appetite yeah. wet for. Oh my goodness, I have noticed like yeah. I see this number all the time. You know, forty for example mm-hmm. can represent like coming through a season of testing and trial or a season of wilderness. Like, there's so many biblical meanings mm-hmm. and Bibles are so important. Um, numbers are so important in the Bible. God spoke a yeah. lot using yes. seasons and numbers and that kind of a thing. So yeah. I think we've said enough about that. Let's yep. move on to dreams. Uh, while we're talking about resources, I'll just say this. One of the books that it's like our go-to top of the mm. library in our dream category is it's it's this author, his name's Ira Milligan, and the book is called The Ultimate Guide to Understanding the yeah. Dreams You Dream. You probably mm-hmm. have it. We've yeah. probably told yeah. everybody and given everybody a copy of it because this is like the first book that we pull out yes. when uh, one of us has a dream. Really good book, and things are kind of just highlighted bullet points so you can search it. I recommend downloading it on your phone, oh, and that way great. you can just like type yeah. in the keyword, and it pops it mm-hmm. up in the book. So. That's a really great resource, but let's dive into a little bit of prophetic dreams. Mm -hmm. It's a big thing because you have to discern. Is this a soulless dream? Yes. Is this just a dream because I ate pizza too late? Is this a dream because I'm thinking about this thing? And so now it's like in my subconscious or, you know, that feeling when it's like you wake up and it's the Lord overtakes you and it's like, this is from the Lord. This is a warning or this is an answer. Yeah. So speaking of dreams for a little bit. You know, when I think of dreams, um, the first thing that I was thinking about when I knew we were going to be talking about this topic today is I think, too, a lot of times when you dive into the prophetic in any way, some people just automatically think like, oh, that's not me. I'm not this. Or I, I remember a time in my life where I thought like, I'm just not prophetic. Like there are other people yeah. who are away. But the truth is, 
The whole vision of the new covenant, the whole reason Jesus came was to make everything available. Proverbs 20 says yes. the lovers of God are prophetic. Oh, they so, have eyes to see and ears to hear. Yeah, so it's like, first, I think we have to just understand in ourselves, like, I am prophetic. Yeah. That is who I am. That is the nature of the God that lives in me. And yeah. it kind of removes that lid. But one so thing good. that I think because... There was a time that I wasn't, I didn't, I just didn't dream a whole lot. Uh, God would speak to me in other ways, but there, and it was a desire of mine. And I started asking God. Yeah. Um, and funny enough, God used the scripture. You know, if you have, let those who have ears to hear, hear, let those who have eyes to see, see like those kind of things to help me. Because practically, I think in this, this isn't just specific to dreams, but I think it could be all, but just in the context for me in dreams is if you're hungry for something, there are practical things we can do to yeah. set ourselves up. Like just thinking in the way it has worked for me in becoming more of a dreamer and someone who has more frequent dreams would be setting myself up to have ears to hear and eyes to see, which for me looked like getting in tune and staying yeah. in tune with the prophetic and what God is saying and what God is doing. I think in our lives, we have so many things that we can put in our eyes mm -hmm. and in our ears. And, and when we will really tune our ears, yeah. cut out the fat in yeah. our lives and really focus on what God is saying. That's true. So a lot of times before I go to bed, I will just laying in bed, just pray in the yes. Holy Ghost. Yes. Just get myself in tune. If if there have been other yeah. things going off in me, yeah, just really, That's really tapping good. in and leaning mm -hmm. in in those times yeah. and just focusing in or asking God, like, God, give me a dream. I yeah. need, I need, I need your wisdom. Yes. I need prophetic strategy, whatever yeah. it is, tuning in and then just like. Yeah. letting go of control. Cause I think too, it can be like so fixed on these things yeah. too, even like with numbers, like being fixed on yeah. it and just letting go. Like and you're that's trying too think. hard. <laughs> yes. You just, just yeah. let it go. But also like, no, like if I can t get in tune with the Holy spirit, that's already in me yeah. and I can like cut the fat, remove the clutter. God's going to speak to me. Yeah. And it helped personally. It helps me. Mm -hmm. And I, I know some of the wildest encounters I've had with the Lord have started with just a dream yeah. that kind of like is a breadcrumb mm -hmm. for me to like uh, go in deeper, yeah. you know? So I don't I know. That's that. what I think of, but I think that's awesome. I think there's some practicals that you kind of skirted around there. I love that kind of just preparing yourself before you go to sleep and yeah. decluttering your mind. And I will say there are, it's crazy. Like I go through seasons where I'm dreaming every single night or mm -hmm. multiple dreams a night for days or weeks at yeah. a time. And then I'll go through like a dry yeah. season where it, I'll go a couple of weeks with no mm -hmm. dreams at all. And then it'll kick back up. So I think that that's something to just be aware of Yeah, is sure. it's kind of fluid. I also think though, one of the ways that God will entrust you with more dreams is how well we steward them. Yeah. So like if God is giving you dreams, you need to write them down. Mm -hmm. Even if it's in the middle of the night and you awake from a dream and you have that urgency and that unction of like, yeah. this one's from the Lord, write down every detail because I know from experience, if you wait till the morning, you will yeah. probably forget a lot of the details. Yeah. So that's one thing that I've learned. I keep a dream journal on mm -hmm. my phone, easy access that if it's one, two, yes. three, four in the morning, I can just roll over and type everything out and right. I have to fix some yeah. errors, I'm sure in the morning, but stewardship, yeah. he, he, when he sees like, wow, you really, mm -hmm. you're really stewarding what, what you've been given. So then you write it down, but then, you know, the coming days when you're in prayer, you're digging it out. Yeah. You're searching out the meaning for it. You're looking for the interpretation. Yeah. You're asking the Lord, okay, what are you trying to say? Some of it, sometimes dreams are real plain black yeah. and white. It's like, okay, I know exactly mm -hmm. what you're saying. And then some of it, it's so hidden mm -hmm. and it's like, it's the glory to, uh, I, I might not get yeah. the verse right, but basically it's the glory of the king to seek out and yes. search out and matter. Yeah. And so I think the Lord loves those scavenger mm -hmm. hunts with us where he's like, okay, here's the little breadcrumbs. Yes. Now go and dig out the revelation. Yeah. And then there's sometimes I've had dreams that 
I don't understand. And then three years later, it hits me out of nowhere. <laughs> oh my gosh, that one dream that I had three years ago, yeah. I just have a revelation on yes. it. And it, and it was just, you know, ahead of time and yeah. God gave it to me in advance. But, uh, I think stewardship, seeking them out. Yeah. One of the other things I, w- I was going to say, it's, it's funny we're talking about this because just this week, Pastor Lindsay and I were needing to make a big life decision. Mm-hmm. And for like six months, we've been in limbo about it, have heard nothing. Like we've been seeking the Lord about it, mm-hmm. but just, yeah. it's like, he's just nothing. nothing. <laughs> we're like, Lord, we're trying to follow your leading on this. And a few nights ago, actually, it was Saturday night. Um, I was awakened in the middle of the night, and I just began to cry out to the Lord. And I was mm. basically like putting a demand on Him, yeah. like, "You're going to give me an answer. <laughs> I need." And it's funny you said the word breadcrumb. I told Him, "Just give me a breadcrumb. Yes. I need you to speak. We need direction yeah. now. Like we've we've been waiting, yes. and we've got to make a decision, and we need to know what to do." And as soon as I began to drift off into sleep. I heard a phrase, and I'll, it won't make sense to you guys, but it was the phrase four for four. Well, three years ago, August of 2021, mm-hmm. we got a prophetic word. Pastor Lindsay and I got a word from a prophet, and this this kind of segues into prophetic words, mm-hmm. our next topic. Mm-hmm. We got a prophetic word from a prophet in August of 2021, and the essence of the prophetic word, he kept saying this phrase, four for four. Four for four, four for Mm. four, four for four. Well, I haven't thought about that. This is funny because it's like numbers, a dream, and a prophetic (laughs) word. Well, as I'm drifting off to sleep after I just cried out to the Lord for an Mm -hmm. answer, I have this, I hear this voice of Holy Spirit say four for four. Mm. Well, the only thing I can think of is to go back and look up this prophetic word, which was a prophetic word about ministry mainly. But there's one sentence in this prophetic word that is the exact answer to what I was asking the Lord. Mm. And I didn't even remember that that was in the prophetic word, (laughs) but I read it and I'm just like in my bed. Yes, Lord, you give him an answer. (laughs) And uh, we woke up, I told Pastor Lindsay about it Sunday and it it literally answered. And now we knew how to move forward with this thing, this big decision in our life. And so there's a few things that I'll just speak to with that is God does love when we put a demand on Mm -hmm. him. He really does. And he loves to speak to his children. He loves to show his children Mm -hmm. our future. And I think sometimes he's just waiting for us to get desperate enough Mm -hmm. and really like cry out to him enough. But I will also say there's a, a really powerful partnership between the prophetic and intercession. Yeah. And most, I would say for me personally, Uh, you could speak into this, but for me personally, I would say like 90% of the prophetic dreams that I have are to lead me into intercession Mm -hmm. for somebody, for a people, for a region. It's, it never fails. Anytime we leave this region and go anywhere, I have a prophetic dream or multiple every single time. And this is something that I've learned with the Mm -hmm. Lord. And now I've learned to expect it. I'm wanting to go on vacation, but the Lord's like, well, while you're here, I'm just going to have you intercede (laughs) for a couple of days too. And so I've learned that. That's how the Lord speaks Mm -hmm. to me, one of the ways that he speaks to me. But I was just going to say one more practical thing is be really aware of the the moments when you're drifting off to sleep Mm -hmm. and the moments where you're coming out of sleep. I think that is like the times that God speaks to me the most is when I am like falling asleep or waking up and I'm in this space of like... I don't know. I'm just so open. My spirit, I guess, is just so open. Again, this could just be totally a me thing and a weird thing. <laughs> I have no clue. I've never asked other people about this, but maybe is, yeah. is that the same for yeah, you? Would you I say? agree. Yeah. When you're kind of in the middle. Yeah. I agree. It's like you're beginning to wake up. I hear so much from the Lord and that's not even really sometimes dreams. Like sometimes it's actual experiences mm-hmm. or um, like I heard this phrase. It's mm-hmm. just, I've, I really am tuned in so not intentionally, really in my body, yeah. I'm just sleepy, but I would say to just be aware when you're, that's why it's probably best to not just fall asleep to Netflix. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of circle yes. back to around to what yeah. you were saying, or, you know, wake up and immediately turn on the news while you're trying to wake up. Like mm-hmm. really give yourself that space to just be in tune yes. with the Lord. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. Sometimes there, there's been times in my sleep, a lot happens in my sleep. <laughs> 
where I'm having actual encounters and I wake up and I'm like, I don't even think that was a dream. Like, I don't know if that was a dream or if that was real. Was I really doing that? Where really was I? I I literally can't tell. (laughs) And at this point in the video, you may be hopping off (laughs) and thinking we're crazy. But it it really is true. There's sometimes that I'm like, I was fully awake, but that felt like that had to have been a dream. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there is so much God wants to speak to you. We've said a lot about this topic and we, I I just love talking about it. We can talk forever about it, but I would just leave you with this. Seek the Lord for his direction. Ask him to lead you. Proverbs 20 verse 12, lovers of God have eyes to see him, ears to hear him. He loves to speak to his kids in so many ways. So pursue it. Just, just reach out to your Abba father and he'll speak to you. So thank you for watching. We love you and we'll catch you next time.